Hi everyone, welcome to the AME office. I'm Dr. Dean Olson. I'm a senior AME and the HIMSS AME, and today I want to talk about color vision testing and let's read the fine print. Today is January 10th, 2025. As always, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and not on behalf of the FAA. As many of you may already know, as of January 1st, 2025, there's been some changes to color vision testing required by the FAA. So today I want to talk about the FAA requirements for color vision testing. I'm going to cover the following topics. Old testing requirements, new testing requirements, why is this changing, new testing procedures, who needs to be screened and or tested, what's in the fine print, medical conditions and medications that can affect color vision, and getting tested, who has the testing software. Okay, old testing requirements. You can basically think of this in two steps. In the first step, pilots would be tested using office-based tests by the AME during their flight physical, and this was required during every flight physical. There were roughly eight or nine tests allowed by the FAA and basically uh, consisted of color plate booklets and visual devices like the Optic 900 or the Farnsworth Lantern. In this setting, you were allowed to test as many times as you would like and fail as many times as you like, but you need to pass one of these testing options. If you were unable to pass any of the office-based tests, you had the option to request functional testing administered by the FAA, which were the OCVT and the MFT. Now, this was a high stakes test. It was administered once and you either passed forever or failed forever and no future tests were administered. If you passed, uh, you were given either a statement of demonstrated ability or a soda or a letter of evidence or LOE. Now, in the summer of 2024, three new tests were added to the list of acceptable office-based tests, and these were computer-based tests. Uh, these tests require the airmen to review color vision plates on the computer and enter the number that they see in the color plate. These tests remove any potential for examiner bias from the testing procedure. Then on January 1st, 2025, the FAA changed the screening requirements during the flight physical. The old traditional tests are no longer allowed and now only the three computer-based tests are allowed. But there was also a change to who needs to be screened during flight physicals. So before I dive into the protocol for this, I wanna just mention why this is changing. In 2002, there was a crash in Tallahassee of a FedEx aircraft. The first officer on that plane had color vision deficiency. The NTSB felt that the FO's color vision deficiency was contributory to this accident, of course, along with other factors leading to the crash. After their investigation, the NTSB handed down recommendations to the FAA for changing color vision standards. In 2010, the FAA began an evaluation process of multiple color vision screening tests, and after quite rigorous testing of thousands of subjects, concluded the now allowed three computer-based color vision tests would be the best for screening pilots. If you're interested, I've included several links related to the FedEx crash included, including a link to a video as well as to the NTSB investigative report in the description of the video. So there are three computer-based color vision tests allowed. These include the City Occupational Color Assessment and Diagnosis. This is a British-based test. The Raven Cone Test and the Wagner CCVT, which is the test I offer in my clinic. Let's take a look at the new screening and testing procedure. Now, I want to make a distinction between what the FAA is, ter is terming screening versus testing. Screening is what we've always done during the flight physical. What's new is that not everyone is required to have screening performed during their flight physicals. Testing is, testing is color vision testing using the same computer-based tests, 
but it will be mandated for pilots who have certain medical conditions that could affect color vision and or who are taking certain medications that can cause ocular toxicity and affect color vision. So let's look at this flowchart because it'll answer a lot of questions and it shows us the pathway for screening. Basically, you can see that there are blue boxes and yellow boxes. The blue boxes pertain to returning pilots and the yellow boxes pertain to first time applicants in general. On the left, you can see if you're a returning pilot and you have passed any previously FAA approved color vision test during your flight physical before 2025, you don't need to do color vision screening during your flight physical. If you're a first or second class pilot who has a soda or LOE for color vision deficiency without any limitations on your medical certificate, you don't need to do color vision screening during your flight physical. If you're a third class pilot with a soda or an LOE, or you have a limitation on your medical certificate and you do not want to upgrade to first or second class, you don't need to do color vision screening during your flight physical. However, if you're a third class pilot with a soda or an LOE and you do want to upgrade to first or second class, you will have to do the computer-based color vision screening. Additionally, if you are a first-time applicant, and this doesn't matter if you're applying for first, second, or third class, you will have to do the color vision screening. Now, if you pass, it's quite simple. The AME gets to issue a medical certificate and you will not be required to do any further screening during any future flight physicals, but that comes with an asterisk. It is possible for a pilot to develop a condition or end up on a medication that could affect their color vision, and I'll talk about that in a minute. If you fail the color vision screening, the FAA has instructed AMEs to issue a third class medical certificate to the pilot with the limitation valid for day visual flight rules, VFR only, if you are otherwise qualified, meaning if you otherwise pass the flight physical. So if you're a pilot that fails the screening, but you still want to upgrade, you've got one option, and that is to appeal to the federal air surgeon for an upgrade. There's a particular form that needs to be filled out, and I've provided a link to that form in the description of this video. This may involve performing the OCVT and the MFT, but that comes with a caveat. The FAA is, has told AMEs that only select cases will be allowed to do additional testing and that there must be a compelling reason for providing the pilot with additional testing. And at this time, the FAA has not defined what a compelling reason is. However, I hope they may come out with this in the near future. Uh, my suspicion is that if you're a young applicant and you want to become a professional pilot and you're unable to pass uh, the color vision screening, that that may be a compelling reason for allowing additional testing. There may be other reasons, but I just don't know at this time. Next, we need to read the fine print. As you can see in the flow chart, the FAA has noted some medical conditions or medications may require color vision testing as part of routine evaluation data. So what this indicates is that pilots who have certain medical conditions or who are taking certain medications and are on special issuance will be required to do regular color vision testing using the same three office-based computer tests. The FAA has stated that it will um, be indicated in the future in the pilot's special issuance authorization letter if they're going to be required to have to do regular color vision testing. The FAA has yet to publish what medical conditions and medications will require regular testing. However, Wagoner has provided a list of conditions and medications that can affect color vision. Keep in mind that this list may not accurately represent what the FAA will ultimately provide as their list of conditions or medications. For medical conditions, you can see here there's glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, multiple sclerosis, 
Alzheimer's disease, and optic neuritis. Again, I cannot guarantee that any or all of these will be included in the FAA's list, but my suspicion is that multiple of these will be included. For medications, uh, you can see a relatively extensive list here published by Wagoner. Some of the more common medications on the list I've highlighted in red boxes, including alcohol, aspirin, cimetidine, which is a medication commonly used for reflux, Dicyclamine, which is a prescription medication called Bentil, used for irritable bowel syndrome. Estrogen products like birth control pills or hormone replacement therapy. Famotidine, which is another medication used for reflux. Glomipiride and glipizide, which are used for diabetes. Hydroxychloroquine, which is a multi-use medication commonly used for arthritis. Indomethacin, which is a pain medication influenza vaccine, and isotretinoin, which is an acne medication, but this medication is not allowed by the FAA. Last, I want to talk about getting tested. The FAA has not mandated AMEs purchase the software, and some AMEs may decide not to purchase it because it's expensive. If an AME works under a medical organization, it's certainly possible that the organization won't be willing to purchase the software. The FAA has said that pilots can get testing performed in offices other than their AME's office. So a pilot could go to another AME who has the software, take the test, and then take the results to their regular AME, or they could go to an optometry office and get testing performed if the optometrist has one of the approved computer-based color vision tests. So that's the new color vision standards handed down by the FAA as it currently stands today. There will be more to come as we ask the FAA more questions about the standards, as we learn more about the nuances of different cases, and as the FAA defines who needs to be tested on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe if you would like, and certainly share this channel with your colleagues so they can participate in the discussion. If you have any questions or would like a certain topic to be discussed, please reach out or leave a comment. Thanks, have a great day, and I'll see you next time in the AME office.